from WLWT. This is Issues. Hello, welcome to Issues. I'm Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney of Sesh Communications and the Cincinnati Herald. We have a lot to talk about today. A little later, we're going to talk about migraines. Maybe after the events of the past few weeks or months, you might have some migraines. We're going to talk about that. To Michael's going to interview someone from UC Health. Um, we're also going to talk about the Women's Crisis Center. Um, it might be one of our area's best known secrets, a really fantastic uh, agency. So you're definitely going to want to hear about that. First, we're we're going to talk about something a little bit different, the export business, yes, here in Ohio. There are opportunities if you need to export to international markets. So let me introduce to you Deborah Davis, and she's Hi. director of the Minority Business Assistance Center at the African American Chamber of Commerce. And, and Kathleen Marshalek, who is director of the Export Assistance Network, both with the state of Ohio. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you for coming. Is it all right to say Kathy instead yes, of Kathleen? It is. Okay, because I heard you say Kathy. But I'm like, I'll call you Kathy. Okay, great. So the export business is something you know I might not have thought of here in Ohio, in the middle of the Midwest. Tell us about that. Well, actually, Jan Michelle, um, I met with Kathy several months ago. And um, my clients are minority-owned businesses, and some of them are trying to grow their business, and that is my job to help them to grow their business, as well as to get their certification with the state of Ohio. And so in talking to my clients, I found that um, they weren't exactly taking advantage of all the opportunities that they had to grow their business. So I uh, spoke with Kathy, who is um, an expert in exporting, and talked to her about perhaps putting on a seminar to increase the awareness of the options that they have to increase their revenue, to grow their business. So that's how it all started. So, And I was going to say, that's huge. I mean, if you're going from a local market to the international market, I mm -hmm. mean, that's really helping someone grow their business. Exactly. So tell us about the whole export thing in Ohio, Kathy. Um, Ohio has always been very active in the international community. In fact, we are ranked the eighth state out of all 50 states. Really? For, yes. Wow. We exported last year $50 billion worth of exports. Not only is it important statewide, but the city of Cincinnati is actually the, I think it's the 12th or 13th city, I think it's 13th wow. um, city in the United States. Oh, you're and kidding. Yes. Who they, knew? What, what, what kinds of things are we exporting? Well, primarily machinery, aviation, automobile, chemicals, optics. We have a wow. whole wide variety. But there's probably a resemb um, resemble the larger companies here in Cincinnati. And Deborah and I both work with small to medium sized businesses. So, but there are quite a few. I think there were 2,500 um, exporters in just Cincinnati last year that made export 100. Really? Yes. That's fantastic. So. so small businesses have this export opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. One of my clients is in the paper um, business. And so I introduced him to Kathy. And I said, what about the possibility of exporting uh, your goods and services to another country to help you to grow your, your profit margins? Wow. So that's why we're having this seminar next week on November 17th. It's um, basic strategies in exporting. And Kathy, you want to go into some of the yeah, topics let's talk we're going to cover? That, that sounds sure. really exciting. Um, well, most companies that do not export have major fears as to that it's very, very difficult. So our organizations try to break it down for them. Um, at the program, we're going to start with helping them, are you ready to export? Not everybody has an exportable product or an exportable service. So we're going to help them assess, are you ready? Then we're going to help them understand what resources are available to them. Where are your top markets? What market research do you tap to find that? Um, what resources as far as government agencies, state agencies, we're both with the state agency, but there's also federal resources available. There's international bankers and lawyers and forwarders. So we help them to understand the process. Then strategize to say, well, here is your best market. Now, how do you get into that market? How do you sell domestically? What can we overlie? 
put into a foreign market that helps you to be successful there. I think that's that's really fantastic because it just seems like we're, we're going to take a small business or lots of small businesses here, like right mm -hmm. here in Cincinnati and I bet a lot of business owners haven't even thought about the Absolutely. international market just like you mentioned your client mm -hmm. who sold paper. Yeah. I mean paper is used everywhere. Yes. Exactly. So wow and so and, and it does sound like kind of an overwhelming process so I love the fact that you two are putting on this seminar because mm -hmm. you know if, if I were doing this I would say you know like legally you know what kind of yep. legal things do I need to do you know what about yep. insurance how do you get the resources and so, we want to do it yeah. in phases like this will be the first and then okay. we want to follow up with those companies to see if they need any further education oh, or information great. about the exporting business to see if they're ready to go to the next level so that's that's um, one of the that. outcomes of I this love that, seminar Deborah, because a lot of times you come to seminars and you're ready to go and then you go okay so I've started now mm -hmm. what's next exactly and, yeah there's so no we net want to there provide to kind them of with the tools if they're ready mm -hmm. to go to the next level to follow up with them and okay. basically walk them through the process so this is just the beginning well let's mm -hmm. let's give information on the seminar I don't know if we have it on the screen but just tell us when it is where it is does it cost anything the seminar How do we is sign free up? Oh, we do have it okay the seminar is free. It's going to be at HCDC on um, Mentor Avenue in Norwood. Um, it'll be from 9 until 12. Um, we'll have um, various speakers presenting about the export business. DHL is Express is one of our sponsors. Oh, We're working with the U.S. Uh, Department of Commerce. We're working with um, the export entity with the state. Um, we also have the um, African American Chamber of Commerce. We have uh, Growth by Export, um, the U.S. Chinese Chamber of Commerce. The Chinese Chamber of Commerce is also working with us. Wonderful. So. And so you yeah. said it's Thursday, November 17th, 9 a.m. to noon at the Hamilton, Hamilton County, County Development, Development Company. Um, and that's right over there on uh, 1776 Mentor Avenue in exactly. Norwood. Easy to mm -hmm. find. It's right exactly. off of Montgomery and Road. And it is free and it's open to anyone in, who has a small business or anyone who is interested in starting a small business and wants to learn about the exporting industry. That is Do you want us to call you 751-9900 at the that, African American exactly. Chamber? Okay. Great. All right, 751-9900, call Deborah. Um, Kathleen or Kathy will be there too. Yep. So this is fantastic. So thank you. Yeah. And then we'll have to talk another time about how small businesses get certified because that's right. really important too. Exactly. Thank Stick you. Stick with us. We'll be back in a moment. So Michael's going to talk to Dr. Vincent about migraines. Welcome back. I'm to Michael Bobo, and I'm here with Dr. Vincent Martin from UC, the director of UC Health Headache and Facial Pain Center. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Martin. Oh, my pleasure to be here. So, give us a little information and background about w what you've done over as a director of UC Health. Well, what we've done is we've, we've established a headache and facial pain program where we uh, where we basically see patients with both headache and facial pain that are usually pretty refractory. Oftentimes they've already seen other neurologists and primary care physicians and they've tried other alternatives and looking, at, looking to us to, to treat their uh, headache disorders. What's unique about our program is it's a multidisciplinary program at UC. So we, have, we refer sometimes people to physical therapy and we have like uh, headache specific physical therapy. We have some dietitians we can refer to for migraine specific diets. Um, we have alternative services like acupuncture and so forth. So we're trying to develop a headache program that deals with the whole patient, not just the head. That sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Now, you, meant, you said refractory. What does that actually mean? Well, refractory often means that the patients have very frequent headaches. Okay. So, and sometimes very difficult to treat. Uh, so a refractory headache patient would often be someone that has more than 15 days per month with headache. And oftentimes they will have migraine, but they can have other headache disorders as well. And many times they're on two or three different preventative medications. Those are daily medications to try to prevent headache. And they may also be taking a variety of different medications, acute therapies to treat the headache when it does come on. So what's the difference between a headache and a migraine, just in layman terms? Sure. Well, a migraine headache is typically a one-sided headache. It tends to be moderate to severe. 
Um, and oftentimes it has other symptoms. So it has, has nausea or vomiting that may be associated with it. And also, if that's not bad enough, then you can also get sensitivity to light and noise. It's almost like, you know, like you're a werewolf where you have to kind of withdraw into a dark room or something. So it's like three different components. And which component bothers the patient kind of depends on the patient. Some patients would say that, that it's this, the light symptoms or the noise symptoms that are most bothersome. Most consider pain or some consider nausea. So it's kind of this trifecta of symptoms that compose migraine. Uh, tension type headache is the exact opposite. That's the most common form of headache out in society. Those patients have more mild headaches and it tends to be more band-like and pressure-like and less severe, so. Okay, and what age do people usually start um, getting migraine headaches? Well, it's interesting. Um, they're rather infrequent prior to puberty. So in, when adolescents, when both boys and girls go through puberty, uh, the, the, uh, the headaches become more frequent in women. And it's thought to be those, the fluctuating hormones that occur as part of the menstrual cycle and it's onset during adolescence that actually bring the headaches on. So women are actually three times more common to have migraine uh, than men for that reason, so. So why is that with the, the hormones? Like how do the hormones really affect you with the menstrual cycle and everything, how does that affect the migraines? Well, there's something called menstrual migraine. About two thirds of all women who are prior to menopause and having normal menstrual periods will have something called menstrual migraine, which is where the headaches will begin anywhere from two days before to three days after the onset of a menstrual period. And it's thought to be the falling estrogen levels that occur around the menstrual period that actually trigger the migraines. Okay, what other type things? Is there anything dietary that might trigger migraines? There's lots of interesting uh, new work on diet and headache. The biggest dietary factor is probably caffeine. So people that, will, that drink more than about uh, three or 400 milligrams of caffeine, that would be like maybe, maybe three caffeinated beverages, eight ounces. Mm -hmm. um, and if they drink them in the morning and wait 24 hours, then by the, or more, by the time they have their next cup, then they could be in full-fledged full uh, caffeine withdrawal, which can trigger headaches. Yeah, I think so. I've experienced that once or twice before. Um, what other, what, are there any common things that people should avoid besides caffeine? Yes. Uh, one would be monosodium glutamate. So that's uh, basically in flavor enhancer found in a variety of different foods. So, and it has a lot of different names. It could be called MSG or monosodium glutamate, could be called natural flavor, kombu extract. And then if you're a label reader, it could be anything that says partially hydrogenated on it. So partially hydrogenated soybean oil, and it, basically it's a flavor enhancer that in any kind of processed food that needs kind of a kick. So something that wouldn't nor, nor ordinarily taste very good, they might put MSG in it, it might make it taste very good. So you know, boil in the bag foods, uh, canned foods, and other kind of processed uh, foods often have MSG in them. And it's primarily the MSG in liquids, like in soup form, that tends to be the biggest uh, trigger. Another trigger is uh, nitrates. So those are preservatives found in uh, lunch meat, you know, bacon, sausage, and so forth, and hot dogs, or something called a hot dog headache, where the nitrates actually trigger the, trigger the headaches as well. And there's a variety of other things like sweeteners, like for example, aspartame can sometimes trigger headache in some people. Um, and even sucralose has been shown to trigger it in other people as well. But the, what's interesting about triggers is, particularly dietary triggers, is they tend to be very individualistic, meaning that one person may respond to one trigger, um, and another person may not, and then vice versa. So uh, the triggers tend to be very, um, very individualistic. How can people reach you or make, um, make, have an appoint, make an appointment with you? Do you have the phone number that they can call? Well, one phone number is 475-7880 for, okay. for my practice. Repeat that so. one more time for our radio listeners. Area code 513-475-7880. Also, so. can you get this, this number as well? Because there's another number, 513-475-8730. Yes, that is correct. So okay. there's, a, there's a couple different numbers that they could make an appointment with me or my partners. So Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate the information and the consultations are about two hours long, correct? It depends, you know, the, the direct physician time varies between 45 and, and uh, 60 minutes, but the whole time is probably about two hours, so. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Martin. We will be right back with some more issues. Welcome back. 
So we are talking now with Marsha Croxton, and she is the executive director of the Women's Crisis Center. And they're actually centers because there are six of them, I understand, uh, around our, our tri-state area, the, the greater Cincinnati area. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me and letting me talk. Yeah. So, you know, there are lots of crises we could think about, but what what's the focus for the Women's Crisis Center? The Women's Crisis Center is focused on victims of domestic violence or rape. So we are primarily doing counseling, emergency shelter, um, helping women in court with uh, emergency protective orders. So that's our focus on the crisis side. And you know, let's talk about the um, emergency shelter. How does that work? Well, um, people will get will call our 800, we have a 24-7 crisis line. Oh, good. Or they may, may walk into our office. A police officer may identify an issue. Or if she's in the presenting in the emergency room in St. Elizabeth, they'll call us if she gives them permission. And so we will send an advocate. We will talk with her and determine whether shelter is the right place or if there's something else that we uh, need to help her with. And what do you, you know, just what do you think about um, the rates of domestic violence? Because I don't know if we're hearing more about it or the rates are actually increasing because we hear a lot about domestic violence now. Well, I have an interesting statistic that um, just shocked me. One in four women will be victims of domestic violence. Oh my goodness, that's So huge. more women will be touched by violence than ovarian cancer, lung cancer, or breast cancer oh my combined. Goodness. That's horrible. So it's uh, it's always fascinating to for people to think, oh, it happens to somebody else, or it doesn't happen very often. It happens quite frequently. Oh my goodness! So what happens um, when the when the victim contacts the crisis center? We will um, immediately do safety planning with them. So we want to make sure that they are in a safe place. And then if they're not, we'll bring them right into shelter with their children. Um, and that's if good to know, children may come children, as well. Children, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and while we serve, it's kind of an issue for us because Women's Crisis Center sounds like we only help women, but we help everybody. Oh, really? So okay. if um, a gentleman was having an issue, we're going to find him a safe shelter and we're going to provide the same services to him that we would to anybody that's residing in our shelter. That's good to know and I think sometimes people don't think that men can be the, the victim. victim as well. Correct. So, right. So now you have, there's not just one center, I understand there are six, as you were, so tell us about that. So we are a Northern Kentucky agency, so we have two uh, emergency shelters, one in Newport, one in Maysville, and then we have six walk-in offices where um, individuals can, can come in and, and receive services. And all of our services are free of charge and confidential. So it doesn't matter who you are, walk in if you have a, an issue, we're there. So, any, so let's just take someone who's a rape victim. So they would, they would come to the, to the Women's Crisis Center and then you would get an attorney for them or, we will work or take with, it to the prosecutor? We, yeah. will, we will absolutely provide individual and group counseling and we will um, advocate on their behalf in the legal system. So we will accompany them if they're going to, if they're going to prosecute, we will actually have an advocate there because it's always nice to have somebody who will support you and believe you. Right. Um, we also work with the local law enforcement and with the prosecutor's office. So oh, we're going to help them through that journey. Because that's got to be really traumatic. And so I think um, a lot of people are afraid to actually speak up about that. Um, but to have that full service because you, you need the legal help. But as you mentioned, there's the, the counseling that actually goes with it. Right. And then just being safe. Well, and it's sad because there's a statistic that says 63% of the rape victims don't ever report it. And why is that? Um, I think it's just the whole process of, it, we do a lot of victim blaming in our society. Still, um, it's which always, is just amazing. It's always, why was she there or why was he there, um, as opposed to looking at helping somebody heal. So. Right, which is just, yeah, we, we, we tend to focus on the victim and, and make it as if it's really their fault, and it's not. Because it frightens us, because we think, oh, if it could happen to you, it could happen to me. Right. I mean, I tell people, you can walk down the street nude, and no one has the right to touch you. I mean, you know, there's nothing you can do that gives someone the right to actually touch you. So, That's right. Yeah. 
So, okay, and so, so let's talk about how to get in touch with, with, the, with the Women's Crisis Center. Okay, we have um, an 800 number, 928-3335. Tell us one more time. 800-928-3335, or you can dial 859-491-3335, and you will immediately be uh, connected. We don't have voicemail. It immediately will be uh, answered by someone who will take care of you. Someone is staffing that phone 24-7. Correct. That is really good to know. Now, do you need volunteers? Do you need any help? Do you need support? What do we you need? We absolutely need volunteers. We need um, Many volunteers make our hospital runs at night because we are required to go to the hospital at night if we get a call. Okay. So we have volunteers that will do that. Um, we That's wonderful you do that, wow. Yeah. yeah, always. And we made 170 hospital runs last year. Wow. Um, we also always need help with children's programs or you know, children in, in shelters sometimes just need tutoring or somebody to sit and play. Right, read a story or something. That's Absolutely. Great. So now, do we call that same number yes. for volunteers? Give us the number again. It's 859-491-3335, uh, or you can go to our website. Okay, great. And then there's also another number, 800-928-3335. 9283335 and your website we'll just make sure that people know we'll connect them to the Women's Crisis Center Perfect. website through wlwt.com as our viewers That's know. That's wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate it. You'll have to come back again. Oh, I'd One love of the to. best kept secrets now you know. Okay, stick with us. We'll be back in a moment with some community events. Michael Bobo, I, I thought you were going to just start talking. It's my fault. Okay, to Michael Bobo with some community events. Sorry. First up we have, that's okay, the Social Security Benefits at Retirement, Tuesday, November 15th at 6 p.m., located at 174 Wire, 2300 Montana Avenue. It's free and open to the public. To RSVP, go to 407-9057. Next, we have Hollybration 2016, Saturday, December 10th at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the New Vision UMC located at 4400 Reading Road, parking at Avon Field, Avon Field with shuttle provided. As well, the next one we have is the 100 plus African American Men's Chorus, Sunday, December 18th at 5 p.m. This is at the Allen Temple AME Church located at 7300 Reading Road. This is also free and open to the public. That's great. So it, it's been kind of a rough week. So I just want to say someone said to me, and I thought this was a great quote, that campaigns are about arguing and, and being divisive, but elections are a decision. Once a nation has spoken, we need to pull together. We need to work together. So we're going to stay safe and stay positive. See you next week.